building design architecture. Man, that's fun. You gotta design like a cool, cozy little world for yourself. It only takes a million hours. So that's my first building. Baby's first building ever. You see that? It's a box. It's really easy to just cheat and add a little inset and then extrude the roof downward. And you get this little rim around the edge. And like instantly it looks like a building. Like, whoa, it's instantly a building. Two seconds ago it looked like a cube. Man. And then, yeah, and then you can just add all sorts of random stuff. Like like this thing juts in, jutting from the top. Add some boxes. Maybe slope one part. Bring it up. That's what he did right there. It's the same color. Michael, you gotta change the color. That's red. The building right next to it is red. That's supposed to be brick? Honestly, I don't know. So yeah, gotta change up everything. Just make everything really organic, and then you don't, if you don't worry, if you don't, just don't think too much. Just like be like, ah, oh, extrude this, tilt this, add, oh, there's, there's your, there you go with your rim again. Yeah. So just vary things up a lot. And no matter how weird each individual building will look, uh, the viewer will just be blinded by all that detail that it will look like a city. Maybe that's just what cities are. That's just how you register as a city. And so here's, yeah. So you can see at first I was trying to, yeah, have an array, try to do it procedurally where I just have one long strip of, uh, one long array modifier of those supports and then bend that along, deform it with the same curve, but that's a little too systematic. If I had thousands of lights going along the edges, oh, that would be so cool to have lights. I didn't do any of that. This is a completely dim city. There's not a single point of light in the city. It's a dead city. It's because all the life is in the streets from the people walking down. Man, this, this plan is so well thought out. But I didn't even use a single part of it. Anyway, I was if I had a bunch of lights, I would probably use an array modifier and just have one long thing going down and then bend that by the curve. But if it's just like 12 supports underneath the high high line, might as well just place them random, I mean manually. Randomly is another way you could do it too. That would be pretty interesting. So you can see I've turned that covered roof into uh, some sort of barn thing. Completely out of place. The reason it looks like a barn is just because of the uh, sloped roofs and the color. Yeah, you can see how if you just add stuff, you know, I have that periwinkle building and it's got that weird slope. This adds all sorts of things that are clearly not very well thought out. Just be really dumb and and just don't think too much. And if you just keep adding stuff, then you get something that's possible. Oh, look at that junction, that roof. Man, topology is so fun. No, it's an abstraction. It's a distraction. Yeah, just add stripes and inset things randomly. At this point, what? Oh, wow, it's the day of. At, at this point, I'm working on this on the day of submission. This is 5.20 p.m., and the submission deadline has been nice. So I've got my priority sorted out. I'm Right now, I'm just positioning random details on a building. Oh, there's your little, what's that thing? Let's call it a cloth roof. I don't know what it's called. Oh, yeah. So... I guess it would be good to look at reference imagery and see all sorts of ways in which buildings can vary. At this point, I've already given up on the New York influence because, you know, I was originally thinking, oh, it's going to be on Times Square. Maybe the judges are, like, from New York, so maybe they'll resonate better with the New York architecture. No, I didn't do any of that at all. At this point, I'm actually looking at San Francisco on my phone, you know, just because I've been to San Francisco more. So I, I thought maybe, oh, maybe I'll know the building language a little better. I think it actually didn't turn out too bad. Oh, look at this split up building. That's so futuristic. So next century. Oh, now I'm building a shed on top of the roof. What is this? It's now 5.44 p.m. Wow, I got my priority sorted out. Oh, and this is where I wanted to try having a super tall building. I haven't had any tall skyscrapers yet. And I wanted to do something with the material of the windows. Because you can see all the buildings on the left, these tiny little apartment buildings. I uh, have tiny little windows, and no skyscraper looks like that. Well, actually, that's completely untrue. Lots of skyscrapers look like that. But a lot of skyscrapers also look like this, where they have the windows covering the walls. And I wanted to do something really cool with the material of it. You can see me varying the material. And I want to, oh, yeah, see, have it be all specular. You know, it would be so cool if it were actually darker than the uh, 
and then the concrete on one side and lighter, a lot lighter on the other side. That's how you get that rich, realistic thing. If you start having physical phenomenon that even though you can't describe it uh, at first glance, you know that it's there. You see that pink coming in from the right? Man, that adds a whole new level of soul to the to the piece. And then here's me using sinus to try to, yeah, you can see, trying to shape out the shape of the eye. Oh, there's me putting in the building, trying to cover up that merge. Wow. Trying to cover up your tracks. There's the shadows. Trying to get the lighting right. I've, I haven't mentioned this, but I couldn't decide whether I wanted to use Blender Cycles Renderer or Blender Internal to render it. But the answer is pretty obvious. If this is a low poly thing and I wanted it to be uh, all flat looking and and geometric, kind of like some sort of vector art. So obviously, Blender Internal is what I went for because I've heard, I've only heard that it's better for non photorealistic rendering. But that made me a little nervous about the lighting because I'm usually really bad with lights or with lighting. You know, three point light, I don't know how to get that to actually look natural. You know, you don't don't have any black spots anywhere, or just like goes, or you have just just ran, random black blotch somewhere. No, I have like four lights at this point, four lights, and only one of them casts shadows. I guess that's maybe that's one way you get it to look organic, or get the impression of balanced light without actually having any gradients anywhere. Is you have only one light cast shadows. All the rest of them are just based on position. No no occlusion whatsoever because if you enable shadows on multiple uh hard lights it's gonna look pretty it's gonna look like a stage or an auditorium right you're gonna get a lot of uh hard lines and detail where you don't want them so only one of them that is supposed to be the sun the setting sun you can see already i've got a lot of shadow shadows a lot of shading and you can see at the top there's a bit of that orange sunlight coming in and I thought oh that's gonna be so cool it makes it so warm and nice and lovely and then I, later you're gonna see me add a path because I'm gonna try to keep that area as flat as possible but you know something's not gonna go quite as expected anyway yeah I've I'm pretty happy with how the lighting turned out because I'm usually so bad with setting up those lights once again the building with the rim you gotta have a rim or if you don't Either way, don't don't just have a naked edge, or maybe do. I've seen a number of the buildings in my reference work uh, that have a naked edge, so I don't know. Yeah, see, I still can't decide whether I want it to be a physics proxy or something that's actually for looks. So now I have this one material that's, I have it pink, but in the render it's supposed to be invisible. Oh yeah, there's me looking up uh, Dutch roundabouts roundabouts in the netherlands yeah so those signs trying to make it look like a place where people actually live anyway those uh road the road mesh i have this invisible wall that's supposed to be used only for physics and then i also have the sidewalks a little bit higher than the pavement and that's going to be a mistake that's a mistake that you'll see reveal itself later on and a billboard what's the billboard going to cover I'm trying to use natural objects, natural objects to cover up parts of the road to make the shape of the letters come out uh, very clean. I wanted to, the letters to be completely unoccluded, not have rough edges or bumpy things or circles uh, peeking in. I wanted the shape of the letters to actually be as if you had just taken a letter from the font and just slapped it in there. So I wanted it to have a really strong silhouette. Now I'm just adding buildings, more trees. Oh, this is the R, trying to get the R to be right, because there's no way the R could actually be perfect. Because the R, you see in the font, it actually dips down a bit and then has a sloped line. That's impossible to get, so I try to get the nearest thing. At this point, the trees are still just, just the default icosahedron, but like subdivided. What's going on now? Oh, a fence. Yeah. At this point, I'm actually pretty happy with how the the place looks. Oh, look at that bright sunlight, direct sunlight. Oh, yeah, and there's me trying to make that overpass from before, not overpass, that covered roof from before look a little more shiny, speckly, a little more detailed. But yeah, that, that direct sunlight is something that I want to preserve, is something that I want to keep and emphasize. Like, 
oh, here's a city that's so shaded, but then you get something that's a little different. You get a variety and strong variety where you have something that's super shaded, something that's super out in the open, like you're running through a field during golden hour and it's so beautiful. Man, it'd be so great to keep that and up not not keeping it. It ends up quite different from before. Wow, it's now 8.08 p.m., uh, less than four hours. I mean, more like three and a half hours if you want to be realistic about the amount of time it takes to render. And right now I'm just trying to decide whether I want, how I'm going to cover up that road that makes up the T, trying to get that place out of the way. And you can see me uh, yeah, trying to keep that direct light in there, I've already set the building to be a material that doesn't cast any shadows. So now I'm already faking things. It's already not even in the real world. What's going on now? Oh, this is a mistake. Mm. This is earlier footage. Just skip ahead. Oh, I've looped it. There we go. We have... Now we're back. Back to a... a monotonic time progression we're back to just go progressing as normal it's now 43 p.m so you know time is ticking got my priorities on point it's all going well and you can see the area up there is completely blank it's completely default like some sort of nightmare world oh i'm trying to experiment with that with that now now i'm getting desperate i'm repeating houses nice i think at this point i've just given up on making houses so no no more buildings will be unique at this point. Now I'm just trying to figure out how to reuse them. And also make... Oh yeah, that, that tree coming out of a roof. Does that happen? And at this point, I can't even afford to make buildings uh, shaped right. So you can see me trying to fake that little curve there around the bottom of the W. But no, no, it doesn't turn out well. I don't know if it appeared in the video, but I did try using Cycles Render. Oh, look, there's that shadow. See, there's that hard edge that I want to sort of delineate. Yeah, see, I put a building there, but then I removed it because I didn't want it to mess with the amazing, pristine, uh, direct, sunlit area. You, see, you can see me making a path. I'm making a Bezier curve that's going to define a path, and it's already 9.16 p.m. Fun. And now I'm trying to make put bushes that cover up the end of the path. But yeah, that's just a single plane with an array modifier, and then after that is a curve deformer. Yeah, so there's me calling it quits. Not calling it quits, but you know, saying this is the end. That's the that's as far as the scenery is gonna go. I thought maybe I was gonna have like the camera fade in as it pans down, fade in, and like there's gonna be more city, and then you'll finally see the letters but no i just make it tall buildings completely unrealistic like just as a framing device just cut it off right there and then the same thing below so that'll make it a perfect loop wow everything comes together so nicely wow you can see me adjusting those buildings i'm gonna have to recreate them again in the future oh i'm making another building wow great use of your time it's only 9 38 p.m nice okay at this point i've decided it's time to actually get the original idea that you were thinking of and it's super laggy now and everything is hopeless and I've already removed the sidewalks. Oh wow, perspective. You're not ever gonna see perspective in the actual video. And there's me adding a roof to that because the physics simulation is all buggy and weird. This is using the molecular plugin for Blender. Blender doesn't, I don't know if they have a built-in end body simulation where each particle interacts with all other particles. So I used a plugin called Molecular, and I couldn't get it to work for a few days before this, but I managed to get it to work. Oh, you didn't see, it, it would appear just for a short time and I didn't notice it, but I had it going uphill. You know, that three-dimensional W that I mentioned before, it's coming back to us now. I wasn't able to get those little balls to roll up the, roll up that slope because I had gravity set to like, 50 meters per second squared or something like that something crazy to anchor them to the road because otherwise the balls would like fly off the road and stuff like that so i i set gravity to be really high and then they wouldn't make it up the road like can you imagine the amount of force that would be that would be required to get those balls rolling up this road that has no friction whatsoever uh 
can you imagine if you were not a person but a perfectly spherical object and your body was being propelled by the sheer force of uh, the material strength of other people's bodies that would be a real nightmare situation so at this point I've given up on the whole particle thing I've already deleted the walls I gotta bring the oh I don't even I didn't even end up having a sidewalk in the final version so yeah now I'm just I'm just gonna be like oh it's just a flat flat plane it's just a ribbon with no texture whatsoever honestly I think Maybe that was a better idea because now it reads a lot better. If it were the umbrellas, it would all be all wobbly and have holes everywhere. So maybe this is a lot cleaner. It will read a lot better. Honestly, it didn't really... Re oh yeah, I'm bringing the slope back. Gotta bring that three-dimensionality back to the letters. Now I'm seeing parts where I gotta put something to cover up the top of the A. It's not a two-story A, it's a one-story A. It's the ball and a line together. And now I'm realizing, oh, I gotta have more copies of the ribbon so that I can have them be the right colors. Because now you're having the Z fighting because one part of the H and the other part of the H are different colors. One's red and one's blue. And then you got this blanchiness where they intersect perfectly, but not really. Yeah, so now I'm duplicating it. Yeah, that's one thing that I want to try more in Blender is using the curve modifier and having a mesh, uh, some other mesh, be deformed by that. Because I noticed... If you don't have the curve and the mesh perfectly aligned, like you have them offset in some way, it'll actually have the the, the curve be offset in the shape of the curve. So if you have like a, a U and you have and you don't have the bar mesh aligned perfectly, it's gonna be a slightly wider U or a narrower U on the inside and outside, and that'll probably give a whole new avenue for making really organic looking motion graphics and here I'm testing the timing of the the ribbons coming in I didn't think the ribbons would actually animate very well because I'm actually animating the number of times that a little strip gets duplicated so it's very quantized it's very integer -y, and I didn't think it would ease very well but I guess it turned out fine lots of trees not so realistic is that the end no, that is the end. Well, that's it. Now you see how how magic was made. How it all came together. You saw the magic of the movies finally finally coming to life. Well, that was fun. Uh, the results of the contest will be announced on the twelfth. Don't know what that day of the week it is, but on the twelfth, maybe maybe. We'll, oh no, it's not gonna happen. Tune in next time, where you get to see me make a cool amogram for my Airbnb host when I was looking for apartments in Glendale. Next time on How Made.